it's uh, seven minutes to eight. Now, for more than 60 years, it's warned us, scared us, even told us what to do. But this week sees the end of one of Britain's most watched filmmakers, the Central Office of Information. The COI was set up in 1946 to help the government communicate a whole range of messages to the public. Now, though, it's being abolished. Our arts correspondent, David Silito, has been looking back at the six decades of films that put our safety first. Looks like you two need a lesson in crossing the road. Green Cross Man, Tufty, Lonely Water. Oh, look, in the, water. the COI has tried to warn us, inform us. Sensible children, I have no power over them. Scare us. The Central Office of Information has left its mark. Take this film, shown in schools in the 70s, Apaches. Terrible things are happening to children here. Yeah. I actually remember seeing this film as a kid, and it's scaring the bejesus out of me. The point of the film is to try and discourage children who live in rural areas from wandering onto farms, which, of course, by this stage were full of mechanised equipment, and playing cowboys and Indians there, hence Apaches. Every one of these kids comes to a very messy and gory end. The poor little chap is drowned in something very nasty. <laughs> Other films were less terrifying. This extolled British design and was made by Hugh Hudson, the director of Chariots of Fire, and he wasn't the only famous name director. You know, Greenaway, uh, uh, Lindsay, I think, Anderson worked for them. I certainly asked me in the early 60s. Fantastic films. People should be encouraged to see these films. There's an incredible mix of films from dimwit Joe and Petunia, Oh, no, Joe is just enjoying himself on holiday. Oh, he's decided to have a swim. To how discos make us more creative. Without this release from conformity, the engineer and the scientist, or whatever he is, will become really little more than a very inefficient computer. And then there's this one, extolling the glory of Cardiff to Muslim workers. More than 20,000 films are now in the hands of the British Film Institute. So, looking back... There's lots of this stuff, but is any of it any good? For us at the BFI, the output of the COI is one of the most important archive collections in the history of British film and TV. And don't fly kites or model aircraft near them either. Propaganda. In some ways, I'm actually not that cynical about these films. All of these films are animated by the ideals of public service. And filmmaking that's a, not just about turning a fast buck or about entertaining people, but actually, in some small way, improving the world. Now, that's not something you can be entirely cynical about, in my opinion. Yes, indeed, but you can't disguise bad parking. The government believes there's a cheaper, better method, but the COI does leave a legacy. A dangerous corner, a pretty girl, and wooden head. If that doesn't add up to trouble, I'm not... Scary, funny, bossy. A part of British life for more than 60 years. David Silito, BBC News. I'll be back. Scary stuff. Absolutely. We'll have the news headlines in a few minutes.